feeling ready to become the next SharePoint expert on your team? I'm here to help you with that. By the end of this video, you'll have the tools and knowledge you need to create custom JSON formatters from scratch. Let's elevate your skills to a whole new level. I'll also show you a free tool that makes all of this much easier. So the truth is, JSON formatting is just intimidating for a lot of SharePoint admins, especially if they have never used JSON before. I'm gonna guide you through this step by step and give you tips along the way to help you better understand what it is you're even looking at. Let's get into it. So we're gonna start with just a blank list. There's nothing in here. We're gonna add some columns and we're gonna go through a few different examples of how you can create this formatting from scratch. The first thing we need to do is add an extension for the browser. You're looking for SP Formatter, and you're gonna add that to your browser. I'll show you what this does in the video, but if you like this, absolutely try this out. This can work great by itself, but it works even better with the Visual Studio Code extension, which is how we're going to be using it. So I've got this added. Let's create a brand new column. I'm just gonna create a basic text column, and then we're gonna add a new item. Okay, just something in here so that we can see what the impact is as we are adding our JSON formatting. Now we're gonna go into column settings and format this column, and we're gonna go straight to advanced mode. Then we go up to our extensions and we click on SP Formatter. Now we're gonna turn it on for this particular tab. I do like that it's always off unless you choose to turn it on. So we're gonna turn it on here and it changes the column formatting pane. We see the, the enhanced formatter is enabled. It also cleared out the schema since that's not really needed in this case. And as you're typing, you'll see that it will auto populate the options here. So for the element type, if we just open this up, you can do a control space to trigger that auto complete as well. It'll tell you what options you've got to create a new element. So if we wanna create a div, it's as easy as that. We can add a comma here. It'll tell you what options we can place inside this JSON object. So if we wanted to add CSS styles, we can choose the style. If we wanna set the text content that's gonna be displayed, then we can choose the text content. Or we can change other attributes on this div using the attributes option. You've got children on here, basically everything that you want to be able to do inside this formatting, it's gonna help you understand what options you can use. But I said we're gonna be using Visual Studio Code. So let's fire that up and I'll show you how that works. So I'm in here and I've got SharePoint on the left and I've got Visual Studio Code on the right. If you haven't downloaded Visual Studio Code, uh, it's a free program. So there's no reason to not use it. It sure beats Notepad. So to get started, what we're gonna do is download an extension. This extension is gonna be called SP Formatter, just like the browser extension. But this is one specific for VS Code. It's free as well, so you're just gonna download that. And notice that it's got some instructions on here. It's, it'll show how to configure that. You're gonna be right-clicking on a JSON file, and you'll see Start a New Session is available. You also will need to name your JSON files with a particular naming convention so that this knows that these are gonna be column formatters. So I've already done that. I've got one file called json1.column-formatter.json. And if I right click on this, you'll see an option here, start a new session. I'll click that. And then in SharePoint, you can just toggle the formatting off and back on. And now you'll see VS Code's now connected. And if I type in here, like if I type in the curly brackets to specify a JSON object, you'll see that it's automatically synced to the browser. Not just that, but as we're typing out this JSON formatter, it's gonna automatically be applied in SharePoint and we'll see that preview live for our simple, our simple text field. So to get started, we're gonna open up a set of quotes and we'll see that same autocomplete here like we saw in the browser. So this is why I said it's you could use the browser extension by itself, but if you use it in conjunction with VS Code, it gives you more room to see that JSON formatting, but most importantly, it gives you the option to save those files because this is already saved on my file system. A quick Control S 
We'll save this file. I can keep all of my JSON formatters all together in one area and apply it anytime I need to. I don't have to worry about which site did I apply one to. Everything's right there. So it is great for organization and for building out a library of things that you can use whenever the situation calls for it. To get started with this, we're gonna create a new element. So we use the ELM type field and it gives us the options here, what elements we're allowed to create in this formatter. We're gonna create a div and you see if everything's already synced over in SharePoint in that formatter pane. So now we're gonna add in a comma and you notice that the text is already erased on our preview uh, inside the SharePoint list itself. Uh, it doesn't show us the value anymore. What we're gonna do to get that value back is we need to set the text content of this div because right now it's just rendering an empty div on the page. So to get that value back, we're gonna tell it that the text content should be the current field. Now this is the current field value of the column. So if we select this, then our text is now back. And this is essentially the default renderer for that single line of text field. There's a lot of other placeholder variables like this current field that you can add in there, but getting into those examples is probably going to be for another video. So if you want to know when those come out, make sure you're subscribed to the channel so that you know when the video goes live. But for now, let's start formatting this text. Let's start doing something with it that you would commonly do with a formatter. So what if we set the background color of this, uh, this whole section here? So let's open up some quotes. And what we're going to do is add in a style tag. A style tag is going to let us set the CSS properties of this div, which is how we would control things like color. So as soon as we pick the style tag, it knows that the style is going to be another JSON object inside this formatting block. So it gives us the curly brackets and I'm just going to hit enter to give me a little bit of room to work with. And now we'll add in our background color and you see it right here at the top. But if I didn't know what that was called, I could scroll down through here to find the CSS property that I think would represent that value. If you pick the wrong one, you'll know it uh, because it won't cause the change that you're expecting to see in the preview. But I know that the background color is gonna be set with, well, not border color, background color. And if you see the pattern that I've been using with all of these different lines, you see that there's something in quotes, then there's a colon, and then there's something else in quotes. Other than the style tag, of course, which is an object. But what the pattern is that you're seeing here is that there's going to be an instruction in quotes, like ELM type. And that's specifying you want to set the element type to something. That value is going to be in quotes as well. And then a colon will separate the instruction from the value. With the style tag, it's the same thing. The style is in quotes, but then since there's an object, we use the curly brackets. So for the background color, that's just going to be a value. So we're gonna add more quotes and then it gives us all the available colors. If we do a dark gray, then we see immediately in the preview window that we've got that dark gray background. But now the text isn't very legible. So let's update the color of the text, the foreground color. So we're gonna to need to add a comma to this and then we'll add in color. In CSS, just the word color will always represent the foreground color, colon, and then we'll add in white. And now we've got the white text on a dark gray background. If we wanted this to be black text, we can simply do that. That actually looks a little bit easier to read than the white. We'll leave it with black. But what if we wanted to center this text inside that div? Because you see right now it's left aligned. Well, for that, we're just going to add another comma and then in quotes for a new style rule, specify the justify content option and the value is going to be center. So if we do that, we see that our text is now centered. So if you wanted it centered instead of left aligned, it's very easy to do with one line. Now, what if we wanted to make this text bold? Well, that's easy enough. We'll add in another rule. And in this case, the font weight is what we're wanting to change. The font weight will determine how bold or unbold the, uh, the text is going to look. So we've got bold here and you see that reflected. And if we were to do bolder, then it'll be an even stronger bold. 
Now, what if you are making a change and you don't see that change being reflected? Looks like nothing you're doing is actually updating in SharePoint. Well, you may have an error in your JSON. So for instance, if I delete this comma, then you're gonna see a red underline on this formatter. And if you hover over this, it's even gonna tell you, and it's expecting a comma right up at the top of that pop-up window. So if you're making a change, and if I try and change the color to white, nothing's going to happen over in the preview because we have invalid JSON and so it can't apply that into SharePoint. Now let's add our comma back in and see that everything's applied again. So as soon as you correct that JSON format, it's going to start applying again. So if you start to see it's not working, look at your formatting, look at what you've recently done and look for any of those red underlines or other indicators that you've got an error somewhere. Let's change this back to black though. And let's suppose we're done with this for now. Okay, we've got a basic example, it's working. How are we going to start saving this? Well, first I'm going to save the file. We will just a quick control S, but then over in SharePoint, you're just gonna click save and you can close it, it's done, it's saved. If we refresh the page, you see our formatting is applied. So there's a very basic example of how you could start to change the formatting on a particular field. Now, in this case, it was a single line of text field. What if you had a different kind of column? What if we had a choice column? Let's add one of these and see how that would work. I'll just call it choice. You see that it's already got some colors in here and that's just because as soon as you add that choice column, it's going to apply a default formatter. We're gonna scrap all of that and do this from scratch. So this is good for now. I'm just gonna click save. And now we'll go into column settings, format the column. You see it's already chosen the choice pills here, but we're gonna go straight into advanced mode. And what we need to do at this point is start with a new file. So I'm gonna create a new file. That's a control N by the way that I just did uh, just to quickly create a new blank file. But I need to save this so that the formatter knows that this is gonna be something it needs to, to run on. But I need to save this. So let's just, I can pick this name just to get the naming convention right. Maybe we call this choice.column-formatter.json. You definitely wanna use some descriptive names because it's gonna be hard to tell when you look at a file name, what exactly it does. But for now, I'm just gonna call this one choice. And then like we did before, we right click, start a new session. Didn't even have to toggle the enhanced format in that example because as soon as we connected, it, you see the VS Code is connected uh, over here in SharePoint. So we can just start creating stuff now. We'll do what we did before. We'll create an element of div. We'll add in our text content and set it equal to the current field. Oh, and I know why we're not seeing any output over on SharePoint is because we don't have a value yet. I'm just gonna quickly save this file, even though I know that formatting is not correct. And I'm gonna add in, I'm gonna just set this to equal to choice one for now. Now we can go back into Formatting, there we go. So our, our formatting is now applied. You're not seeing the choice pills anymore. It's just straight text. Now let's add in our formatting. So there's our value that's in the preview over there. It's already set to choice one. We don't have that default formatting applied anymore. We are just using our own JSON formatter. So what we wanna do at this point is start to customize this a bit more. Now we're gonna get a little bit fancier. I'm gonna set the background color like I did before, but this time I want it to change the background color depending on what value we've got in that choice column. So we add our comma and we're going to add a style tag there's our blank object. Now we add in the background color, but instead of setting a static value that, that's applied no matter what choice is selected for that list item, what we're going to do is we're gonna use an Excel style formula in this value here. And this formula is going to give us the ability to use if statements. So if the value is choice one, we can set the background color to one color. But if it's choice two or choice three, we can set it to another color. So first, let's start out with the single if statement, which will start out with equals 
if, and then a set of parentheses. Now the if statement's gonna use three different values inside the parentheses. The first value is gonna be the expression to look at. In this case, we're gonna be seeing if the current field is equal to choice one. If so, then it'll go to the second value. So let's add in our expression first. If current field is equal to choice one and we'll end it with a comma because that lets it know we are done with our expression and now it's gonna be moving to the second parameter for our if statement. So if the current field is equal to choice one, it's going to apply this value to our background color. So let's set it to green. So this applies a green background to choice one. And if it's not choice one, we can do yellow just to see how this looks. Now there's an error with this and it's actually because I'm using double quotes and I need to use single quotes here. And the reason it's throwing an arrow with that is because I started this whole thing with double quotes. So as soon as it sees a double quote inside here, it gets confused because it doesn't know if the double quote that was here is supposed to match up with this or some other one. So what you'll do is inside your double quotes, you can use these single quotes to surround your string. So we've got a, a basic if statement here. I'm gonna save this. If choice one is the value, it's gonna be a green background. And if it's not choice one, it's gonna be a yellow background. We can do a quick save over in SharePoint and we can change the value and just see, is that what's happening? And it, and it is. And you even see that formatter being applied inside the details pane for this list item as well. So that'll take care of choice one, but we wanna change the color for all three options. What we're gonna do with that is we're gonna get rid of yellow. And now if the choice is not green, instead of just spitting out a particular color, we're gonna add another if statement because these can be nested. So we'll do another if, we'll add our parentheses and we'll add another expression. If current field is equal to Again, single quotes, choice two. Then our comma to move on to what color we want this to be. Let's add this, let's set this to be yellow. And now we go to what if it's not choice two? Now again, we're gonna add a third if statement. If with parentheses to start out with, now we add our expression. If current field is equal to choice three. Now, if it's choice three, we will set it to, let's just use blue for something different. And if it's not choice three, well, it doesn't really matter. In our example, we only have those three choices, but maybe you wanted a default one of white as the background. So it just kind of looks like normal, you know, a SharePoint background. So let's go back through this whole expression and walk through what this thing is doing. So we're setting the background color to, if the current field is equal to choice one, then we're gonna be using green. If it's not choice one, then we go to our second expression. If it's equal to choice two, then it's gonna be yellow. And if it's not choice one or choice two, then we go to our third expression. If it's equal to choice three, now it's gonna be blue. And if it's not any one of these, like maybe it's a fourth value that's been added, it's gonna be white. It won't have any formatting applied to the background color. And you can keep nesting these if you would like. So now we're using con basically conditional logic is what this is. And this is the same as you could do through the conditional logic formatter in, as part of the SharePoint UI, but we're doing this all by hand which gives us a lot more power and most importantly, understanding of how these things work. So let's save the VS code file. Now notice I'm not in the formatting window right now. If I click on this, it's still the old formatters. So if I go back into format this column and let's see what's in this window. Everything's already in here because as soon as I open the formatter pane back up, then VS Code copied those values straight into here. Let's just save this and edit our list item and see what the options are. And everything's working. Choice two is yellow, 
choice three is blue. Obviously the text color for choice three isn't even legible. It's just not uh, a great color combination. Well, let's fix that. So let's go back into the formatter and let's add in another style tag. Let's control the foreground color with another expression. So we'll set the color. We'll do another set of if statements. Now I'm all for shortcuts, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna copy this whole expression and we'll paste it right in here because this is already giving us the decisions we need to make. Is it choice one, choice two, choice three, or some new choice? But now we're gonna be applying this to the foreground color. So if it's green, then we wanna set this text to, let's see black, yep, black looks fine. You see it updated over there on the preview pane. If it's choice two, then we're going to make sure this is black. And we know that for choice three, we need to change the foreground color. So we will set this to white. And our default is white, but we actually want this to be black because we know that the background color is going to be white by default. So just to make sure we can read the text of any new value, the foreground color for the default is gonna be black. So we'll save our file. We will save this formatting pane. Everything is applied and saved to the column. Now let's edit this list item. And this is looking great. This is already a big improvement. We can read all of the text here. Now the yellow and black looks good. The blue and the white looks good. The green is a little bit hard to read. What if we wanted to set bold on this field so that the black stood out a little bit more against the green background? We know how to make something bold. Let's add another comma there so we can start a new line. We'll go to font weight, just like we did before. In this case, we're just going to apply bold if the choice is choice one. And that's easy to do with another if statement. So we'll add equals if, and then our set of parentheses. We will check for current field, whether it is set to choice one. And if so, we're going to add bold. If it's not choice one, then we'll set it to normal. Now let's save this. So the formatter is back open. All of our changes have been saved. There's our new font weight. Let's save this and then open the details pane and see how it looks. So choice two looks fine. Choice three looks fine. The, notice they're not bold. And then there's our green and it's got bold. It's standing out better. So that's how you can apply CSS properties selectively depending on the current value. And if you wanna see like a syntax reference or something for JSON formatting in the description of this video, you'll find those links. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you know when these new videos are coming out because if you like this kind of content, I'll absolutely keep creating these videos. And if you wanna see what's possible with more complex JSON, I've made videos highlighting some outstanding examples. Click up into this playlist to learn more.